Welcome to Pokemon Conspiracies, a place where we delve into the hidden and mysterious storylines scattered throughout the Pokemon universe. Today we talk about the biggest cash cow in the entire Pokemon universe, Pikachu. We go back to a time when Pikachu was just a little heftier and not quite as shoved in our faces. We take a look back at the possible connection between Ash's Pikachu and the legendary Pokemon trainer, Red. Let's first take a look at Red. Red is the main protagonist in several forms of the Pokemon universe. In the games, Red is a playable character in the first gen games and their remakes. He also makes an appearance in the post-game of the second gen games and their remakes. In the Pokemon Adventures manga, Red is the main protagonist of the first run of issues. We finally see our first look at Red in, on the screen in a four-part anime series called Pokemon Origins, which basically highlighted the events of the first gen games. Let's take a look at the Red from the video games. In the first gen games, Red takes down Team Rocket en route to a Pokemon League Championship. In the second gen games, Red makes an appearance at the top of Mount Silver as the final challenger of the player. In this battle, Red's most powerful Pokemon is a Pikachu. Pikachu and Red were first linked in Yellow version during first gen, when Red's only choice of a starter Pokemon is a Pikachu. The one main characteristic to remember about Red is his stoic demeanor. Red only answers with yes and no when talking to other characters. Red is all business on his journey to the top, silently bulldozing through any challenger who dares to step in his way. When the player encounters Red in the second gen, on Mount Silver, he simply says nothing as he accepts the battle. While keeping these facts about Red in mind, let's take a look at Ash and his Pikachu. In the first episode of the Pokemon anime, titled Pokemon I Choose You, Ash is seen arriving late to the Pokemon lab to receive his starter Pokemon. When Ash arrives, he is told by Professor Oak that all of the other Pokemon have already been chosen. After further questioning by Ash, Oak reluctantly admits that he does have one other Pokemon. He then unveils a Pokeball from a compartment underneath the rest of the Pokeballs. This is where things become interesting and the connection between Red and Ash can be made. First of all, how could Professor Oak possibly be out of Pokemon to give out? Being the only Pokemon professor in the entire Kanto region, it is very unlikely that he would have no Pokemon to give, especially since in episode 227, we see that he has many Pokemon on his premises. And if the professor is able to give trainers Pokemon outside of the main three, then why would he give Ash a Pikachu instead of any other Pokemon that would better suit a novice trainer? We can also see that Pallet Town is a very rural community, and Professor Oak would most likely know of all the Pokemon trainers that would be coming of age that day, which we see evidence of later in this episode when Professor Oak claims that several boys from the town have all come of age that day and require Pokemon. So how would he not have the exact amount of Pokemon he needed for each trainer? It is about this time that we can start to see the evidence that the Pikachu that Ash receives used to belong to Red. The Pikachu that Ash received is special in many ways. First of all, let's take a look at the ball that it comes in. Notice the Thunderbolt insignia on it. We never really see any other Pokeball with something like this on it. Red was able to conquer the Pokemon League and become one of the world's strongest trainers. It is likely that he received a huge amount of fame for not only this, but also for bringing down Kanto's largest crime syndicate. The Thunderbolt may very well have been some kind of gift or badge of honor given to him to set his Pokeballs apart, especially since Pikachu was his most powerful Pokemon and likely favorite. We also notice that this Pikachu is abnormally powerful, regularly taking down opponents that it should not be if it was an ordinary Pikachu. Other evidence of its advanced level is its ability to regularly disobey Ash's orders. We see similar effects when Ash's Charizard evolves and Ash does not have enough experience to control it. Ash's other Pokemon obey almost every command given by Ash, while Pikachu seems to only obey when it chooses to, which hints towards a level that Ash is not yet able to control. In the first episode, it can also be noticed that Pikachu mocks Ash when he fails to capture a Pokemon due to his lack of knowledge about how Pokemon are captured. This behavior shows us that Pikachu has experience with how a Pokemon trainer is supposed to operate, and has witnessed Pokemon being battled and caught in the past. 
Being one of Red's Pokemon, Pikachu would be used to traveling with an extremely skilled trainer, and the vast difference between Red and Ash would be definite cause for Pikachu's lack of respect for Ash. The idea that Pikachu previously belonged to Red is further exemplified in the fact that Pikachu never enters a Pokeball. After its initial release from its ball, Pikachu never again enters a Pokeball in the anime. There is a distinct reason for this. After Ash takes Pikachu from the lab, he tries to put it into a ball, but Pikachu does not enter it when it is thrown. If you look closely, you can notice that it is not the marked ball that Pikachu came in. Due to Ash's stupidity, he forgets to take the actual ball that Pikachu came in. This is why Pikachu never enters a ball. After a Pokemon is caught by a trainer, it cannot enter another trainer's Pokeball unless it is released. The only reason that Ash is still able to use Pikachu as his own is because Pikachu always accompanies Ash on his own free will. This is why, when Ash is asked about Pikachu being his Pokemon, Ash tells his mother that Pikachu is his. We see that Pikachu resents the fact that Ash says this, as if he knows that Ash is not his original trainer. Later in the episode, Dexter tells Ash that some Pokemon hate being inside Pokeballs, but Ash foolishly thinks that this is the reason that he is literally unable to place Pikachu inside one. So why would Professor Oak give Ash a Pokemon that belonged to another trainer? There are two possible explanations for this. We never find out what happened to Red after his adventures on Mount Silver, but we can assume that he entrusted Professor Oak with his Pokemon for safekeeping while he continued his adventures elsewhere. The first possible explanation for why Professor Oak would give Red's Pikachu to Ash is that he knew Ash would be too incompetent to succeed without the advantage of a highly trained Pokemon. Professor Oak is shown to have a friendship with Ash's mother, therefore he would have gotten to know Ash pretty well as he grew up, well enough to realize that Ash is a fool and is limited when it comes to his skill as a trainer. While Ash does go on to be a successful Pokemon trainer, much of it comes from dumb luck or the ability of his Pikachu. Ash never even wins a single league tournament. Professor Oak likely knew that Ash would need the extra help and gave him Red's Pikachu as a favor to his mother. This explains why Pikachu's ball was kept in a separate compartment in the lab apart from all the other Pokeballs, and why Professor Oak seemed to have a premeditated plan to give it to Ash. The other possibility is that Oak really was out of Pokemon to give out, and panicked due to his huge oversight as a professor of not having enough Pokemon for the eligible children of his town causing him to give out the only Pokemon he still had. This could also explain why he didn't ensure that Ash took Pikachu's correct ball when he left the lab, knowing that it was the only way that Ash could actually use another trainer's Pokemon. There is enough evidence within the anime alone to suggest that Ash is in possession of the most powerful trainer in the world's favorite Pokemon. The only question is, what happens when Red returns for his Pikachu? That's all for today. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for the next episode of Pokemon Conspiracies.